This is Hazel's third ride. And today was another windy day, of course. We never seem to get a nice, calm day. So today when I went to get on her, she did move a little bit. I think maybe she was just testing out to see if that, that was an allowed behavior. So what I did was I just kind of stuck with her. I hung on the side of her in case I needed to hop down quickly. I just hung on the side, kept her head flexed. That's kind of the whole point of keeping their head flexed is so that you have control. And I did kind of hit her with my leg a little bit when I swung it over. But you know what? The thing with horses is that I find... It doesn't do you any good if you're kind of tiptoeing around them and trying to prevent every little bad thing from happening because the reality is is that shit happens and you need to prepare your horse for that. So me hitting with her with the side of my leg a little bit, I mean, it is what it is, and she needs to get used to that because I'm not going to get on perfectly every single time. And then I just kind of swayed back and forth in the saddle because she was acting a little bit concerned about that today, so I just wanted to make sure she was good with that before we moved on. Now I was just asking for her head to the side here, and she was being quite resistant to it. She was really stiff on this side today. Horses have good sides and bad sides, and I think this is her bad side. But I just waited out. I'm not going to sit here and jerk on her head and vibrate the rein and do all sorts of other fidgety things. I'm just going to wait it out. I'm not going to pull any harder. I'm just going to sit here and pull at the amount that I'm pulling and wait. And eventually she gave. And then we just kind of went on to the same exercise that we've been working on the last few rides. I just use my one rein to steer her, and the other rein is slack. And all I'm doing is I'm just asking her to go forward at the walk. And I want her, ideally, to kind of go out on the rail. So if she doesn't go out on the rail and she wants to turn, I let her turn, that's fine. I tell her, okay, if you want to turn, then we'll turn. But I'm only going to give you the release of the rein when you go out on the path that I set you on. And where I want her to go is out on the rail. So when she goes out on the rail, I'm going to release the rein and let her do that. And when she doesn't, then I turn her in a circle. So you can see I release here. She didn't want to stay on the trail, so I put her back in a circle and release. And back in a circle because she started to turn. And release. Back in a circle. And release again. And basically you just keep doing this over and over and over and over again. Until they go where you want. And it's a good exercise for any horse. You don't even have to do this on a colt. You can do this on a broke horse as well. I find a lot of horses actually don't know how to just go on the path you told them to go on. If your reins are slack and your legs are not putting any pressure anywhere, they should go straight. This is kind of straightness training. You shouldn't have to micromanage your horse constantly. And I am one to talk because I'm really, really bad for that. But it's something that I'm working on as a rider myself. And I encourage you to do it as well. Try to ride your horse so that they're not constantly being picked at, they should know that when you're not asking them to turn, they don't need to turn, and when you're not giving them leg pressure, they don't need to move their rib cage or their hips or their shoulders. They should be able to go in a straight line on a relatively loose rein without changing direction. And that's what this exercise is teaching her. You can work on this at the walk and then move on to the trot and the lope. And you know, it also makes your circles a lot nicer when you start getting to the point where you're working on circles with your horse, you set them on the circle, you show them the size of the circle that you want them on, and then you should be able to let them go. She was being really stiff on that side, so I'm just honestly being persistent and continuing on with the lesson. Here I was just asking her, to flex and relax before we go on again. She was getting a little bit concerned again, 
So I'm just going to take a moment here to let her have a mental break. And I'm also kind of teaching her um, when I ask her to flex her head, as soon as I release that rein, not to just yank her head back. I want her to keep her head there. And now we just started doing some direction changes. This is where I started introducing both reins at the same time, so that way I can kind of keep her nose from drifting and keep her body from drifting in all sorts of directions. It's just an extra aid for me to help keep her where I wanted her to go. But I think it's important to work on that other exercise I was doing first before you introduce that other rein. But as you can see here, when she's going on the rail where I wanted her to go, then I release. And every time I'm asking her to change directions, I'm trying to do it as softly as I can. I don't just yank on that rein. I give a little bit of subtle pressure, which you might not be able to see in the video, before I take a little better hold of the rein and ask her to turn. I want her to feel the really soft way that I'm asking first before I actually have to put a lot more pressure on the halter and turn her nose to the inside. I always ask the nicest way first. And at this point, I don't really care if her hips are swaying out or her shoulders are leaning in a little bit. It all comes with time. Right now, the only thing I'm concerned about is if I ask you to turn, then I expect you to find some way to move your body to turn. And here she was really drifting out to the in outside, so I just stick with it. Keep that inside rein on and wait for her to actually turn her body and accept the exercise. They don't know what outside leg is at this point, otherwise I would definitely be using it here. But we try not to add too many factors at once with a horse that's not been ridden. So here we're just practicing the backup. She was pretty stiff again today, but I just wait her out. I'm not like pulling harder or anything, I'm just waiting her out. And I want her to get at least two or three actual good steps back first with some momentum in them. I don't want her to drag her feet anymore. We're kind of past that point. Then when I went to get off again, she kind of moved, so I just stay up there until she stops moving. Then I'll pop down. And that was the end of her ride. Pretty simple third ride. Didn't get the trot in that I would have wanted to, but I had to play with what she was telling me she was ready for. So that's what we did.